everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Wanted to do a, a I guess, quasi quick video this morning. It is Christmas Eve, and I know I haven't put some content up for a little while. Recovering from the flu, actually, I'm completely over that, but man, last uh, was it a week ago, somewhere in there, I mean, it's just been, it started with my oldest, then my wife, thought I was in the clear. Oh no, yep. So anyway, <clears throat> that's kind of slowed me down, but you know, this fall I haven't put as much saw content on there. Part of that is I haven't worked on as many. Uh, part of that is I've been waiting on a few parts for a few saws that are going in the collection, like this P39 that I'm looking down at down here, this Pioneer. I hope to get that up on the Firewood Hill. I've got a 710 McCulloch automatic, I think. It might be the last year for uh, that model based on the paint scheme, chain break, and all that. Got a P38 Pioneer. Yeah, P38 out there. I might have already done a video on the P41. I just kind of keyed in on some of those damn Pioneers this fall. But like I say, each one I've been kind of waiting to either have time to, you know, to do a video or to, to get some parts for it. Anyway. There's one other big thing that I did, and I think my camera battery is in good enough shape that we can take a little mosey out to the street here. I didn't do a huge number of videos, uh, but there were a few. My old 2004 GMC that I had, well, on Halloween night, I traded it in on that guy right there. And this is a pretty nice truck. It's a half ton. It's not a three quarter ton. And the reason I was okay with that is it's the three liter Duramax. So, anyhow, I just decided, you know what? I had more truck than I needed 99% of the time. And 14 miles to the gallon out of that old LLY was probably my average for day-to-day -day driving. So, yeah, this thing on the, the worst tank I've had was 21.8. That's the worst tank that I've had, and that was when we had an extended freeze. At least, extended freeze Oregon style. So, you know, I could do lots of video stuff. Uh, talking about all the features it has. I'm not going to do that because you guys can find all that trash. You guys who do better videos than I do. I'm going to talk about how I modified it to work for me. And I have had it up on the firewood hill. I've hauled several loads in it before I had the lift on it. But we're going to start at the back and work our way forward. Did not come with a bed liner. This is an RST package that's heavily optioned. Why? Somebody didn't check the spray in liner, I don't know. Probably was dumb to include that in the financing, but I did. I just said to hell with it, let uh, Airport Chevy go ahead and blow it in there, and I love it. Got the nice LED lights back here. Uh, and there's actually a power outlet. Now that's, that's low, it's 400 watts. What is that, like three and a half amps? But hey, I could run the battery charger for that uh, uh, electric chainsaw. So there's that. The tonneau cover, I actually salvaged that off of the 04, and it fits. I mean, it doesn't fit perfectly, but you show me a cover that they would make that would fit any better than that. I don't think so. So what the hell? Save 300 bucks right there. Also save some money on that back rack. That's off of the 04 also, and the only way you know is that the grate isn't quite cut in the right spot, but it doesn't obstruct the camera enough for me to give a rat's ass. All I had to do was buy the new uh, base plate kit right here. Everything else bolted right up. So, I can cover the load when I want to, and I won't blow the back window out with firewood like I did in the 04 before I bought that rack. Okay, so again, it was an RST, or it is an RST package. Uh, came with a <clears throat> nice receiver on there that matches the tow rating of 9,300 pounds or whatever it is. We'll look at that sticker in a minute. 
but it was too low to the freaking ground way too low to the ground uh, that running board has been ripped off when we were Christmas tree hunting and that was kind of fortuitous because it really didn't damage it that badly obviously I was able to get it back on there but with my wife with me when that happened boy she was very quick to say hey honey you probably should put a lift on the truck okay you got it dear so beefing up I've got the road active suspension you can't see because I put the fender liners in it didn't come with those either damn it but uh, this just is a cup that goes over the leaf spring eye and then you tension it up and what it's doing is it's arching the leaf spring a little bit more putting tension on this coil spring it works great you don't lose any ride quality at all and in addition to gaining uh, level cargo carrying capacity you're also excuse me losing some of the side to side that can happen I mean, it's really stable uh, I don't know if I can get a good view of the leaf spring box blocks but that's what I'm using I'm hoping I'm not looking in the viewfinder at all so hopefully you guys can see that this is a three and a half inch rough country lift so it should be two and a half in the back and three and a half in the front local shop recommended that one god did this lens fog up I think it did sorry about that might even be inside the camera that sucks talk about poor planning isn't that nice anyway the local shop recommended that over the the Rancho three and a half that I was looking at so I went with their advice and I'm happy that I did so what I ended up getting this is a a coil over strut and that's what's factory on the truck but that's an upgraded lifted strut obviously uh, rough country re-engineered a, a control arm upper control arm with the proper ball joint angle and that was crucial to me I did not want spacers and cobbled together stuff that would be just okay I wanted this to be right I didn't want to have to worry about breaking something and again I'm not a hardcore off-roader you guys know what I'm doing I'm cutting firewood crossing the creek on oh, load but it works part of why I needed that lift is that damn hitch right there for the god this camera's pissing me off this all may be for nothing I can't get some good footage here this is bullshit oh, man I may have to quit and letting this thing warm up I don't know anyway it hangs really low now that's up at 10 inches right now roughly lower than I'd care for but it's pretty close to what I had on the old GMC the reason it sits that low is one of the coolers for the diesel engine is right back there so there's really only a couple companies including one here in the Pacific Northwest that makes a, a hitch that'll work for that so that's the way it had to be and it'll work just barely but it'll work still got the recovery hooks up here so that I can use that for you log yard and see back in there the cooling stack one unique thing about this uh, Duramax is they don't use a traditional intercooler. They use a uh, charge air cooler that's engine cooled. I haven't towed with it yet. Just hauled some good loads. So we'll see this winter, or excuse me, this summer, how that all goes. But there she is, um, right underneath her. there we go that's the charge air cooler right there they've got an upgrade from PPE the PPE or AFE one of them jury's still out whether I'll do that I don't know I don't know when I make mods I want it to be for something I don't want it to just be because I could I want it to gain me either fuel economy or something worthwhile all right so to power the winch 
I can't take all this off because, well, I don't want to. Uh, maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. So to power the winch, I tapped into a 400 amp lug right there. Had to notch the battery cover a little bit right there to clear that cable. And then brought it down. Got it zip tied up out of the way. That is a... What is that? I can't remember what amperage that is. Damn it. 200 amp. 200 amp circuit breaker that I keep off until I'm actually ready to use it. And then just snaked it. And that's not easy to do, by the way. Oh, come on. Snaked it way the hell down, and I've got it tucked up. You can see a little more red way down in there. And I've got it tucked up right here. I didn't want to put anything in place until I actually had the hitch mounted properly and I think I'm gonna do some sort of a attempted to mount it over here so it's up above the ground so that no matter what I do I can't rip it off and there's grill shutters actual shutters that open and close up in there they're back here too so it really made the wiring routing a little bit challenging but I've got it, and then I just use the existing uh, lug back here for ground for jump starting to to do the ground cable. So it's actually pretty clean. It's not bad. What else? What else have I done to make this a bit more of a work truck? Uh, one thing I firmly believe in is the bug shield. Not for the bugs, but to keep the edge of the hood from getting chipped with rocks and crap. So, did that. GM does not make, for this model year, a towing mirror that maintains a bl uh, blind spot warning without throwing an error. Boost Auto has one that they've made, but be like 600 bucks. I'm gonna just see if I can live with those mirrors. Like I say, this is a well-optioned freaking truck. It's kind of almost stupid for me to firewood cut in this thing the way it is. But, say it's an RST, has the bows. I'm sitting on leather, heated leather, and a heated steering wheel. And this was built pre-pandemic. This is a 2020. So I bought it used with 33 and some change on it. So it had a little bit of factory warranty left that'll expire later this month. I've added the bank's iDash so I can monitor all the things that I care about, including it'll tell me what gear it's in, since GM doesn't do that. Got trans temp, there's one in the dash, but I can have it right up here. Exhaust gas, uh, the DPF soot level, the diesel particulate filter soot level, where the regen's on and off, you can hear it. If you can know anything about a vehicle, and you know your vehicle, you can tell when this thing's in regen, and even if you can't hear the difference the automatic start stop doesn't uh, it disables that until regen's done and I know a lot of people have strong feelings about that I typically leave it on because I know idling on modern diesel emission systems is bad so you know what if I have to replace a starter someday who gives a shit coolant temperature engine oil temperature anyway that tells me all the things I need to know uh, yeah yeah, got Android Auto, got a built-in brake controller, so I didn't have to screw around with that. This one has the rare Sasquatch mode on it. Please don't ask about that. It's fake. It's just a joke for me and my buddies. That's not a real option. But yeah, this is a nice truck. It's almost a silly shame to, to cut firewood with it, but I do anyway. I don't care. Power sliding window. Got... The garage door remote's plug programmed in. I mean, just the technology on these damn trucks is pretty ridiculous. But anyway, so that's what I've been spending also a fair amount of time on. I had that, that three and a half inch rough country lift put on. I did the road active suspension. Uh, I did all the wiring on the um, 
the winch stuff, put that hitch in. That hitch is a pain in the ass. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the, the video description because it's, it's the best one out there by far, at least from what I can tell. Uh, and there aren't many that fit the diesel that clear that uh, that cooler that's up there. I think it's a, I think that's an external engine oil cooler that's hanging so low up there. But I, I'm not a hundred percent positive on that. Anyway, this thing is built like a brick shit house, but it is a pain in the ass to install, and their instructions make it seem a whole lot easier than what it really is. And God forbid, yeah, I don't know. I I think you'd need to take the bumper off. And I wasn't about to do that. So there were two out of the eight bolts, or ten bolts that hold it on, didn't get used. Because I couldn't find a way to get to those tow hook uh, bolts without taking the front bumper off. And I wasn't willing to do that. Anyway, it's built. Uh, when I get the winch out of storage in the spring, I'll do a, a little... Uh, little video up on the hill of it pulling. I expect it to be fine. The Duramax comes standard with an upgraded 220 amp alternator. Single battery, so we'll see. I, uh, you know, I'm hoping I won't load it down heavy enough to cook the battery. You know, the old truck had two, so I was I had zero concerns about that at all, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, and just all the other stuff, you know, I upgraded the back seat storage. You know, these seats flip up back here so you can put all your shit in. Yeah. At least I have tons of crap that I carry. The GM factory one sat a lot lower and it was a weird shape and I think it was to give you more heel room but look at where the seat back goes. It's not like you need to flip your damn feet under there. Well, anyway, kids have got their power ports back here. They don't have heated seats. I think that came out in 22. But, you know, they do at least get some heat and air conditioning ducted back here, so that's an improvement. And they've already got crap, food, pencils, junk. I love the way they respect Dad's truck. But, anyway. Well, one of the most important things, I guess, is capacities. And I'm pretty sure when I tow my travel trailer, I'm going to be slightly overweight, and I'll explain that. The rear gross axle weight rating, 3,800 pounds, that I'm not concerned about. Max payload, 1685. That's not bad by half-ton truck standards, but let's do some math real quick. Let's just say for good money, me and the kids and the wife, all of us in the truck, with our crap, I mean, that's 500 pounds, 550, depending on what kind of shit we have, just people in the truck. So, now you're down to 1185. Tongue weight of my trailer from the factory was like 690 or something like that. Okay, what does that leave? It leaves about 300 pounds there. So when I've got a full water tank, I've added that hitch up front, added the road active, got my trash under the back seat, got the bike rack on the front of the trailer, got my shit that's loaded in the pass-through storage and some significant stuff in there, very possible very possible that we'll be a little overloaded by payload so I'm gonna get this phone call and we'll come back later okay sorry about that but when it's Christmas Eve and your mom calls you take the phone call actually that was a good time I was kind of rambling uh, for me to kind of regroup uh, so I promised I'd show you some of what I was buying and what I I'm going to buy Said something about leaving with those mirrors. This is going to be my attempt. These are a fairly decent snap over and they have a retaining system that I think will work. Uh, you know, they get a little bigger. But I still think, you know, being able to take those off will work better the actual tow mirrors that boost auto has they look like what's on a heavy duty but 
they create a pretty big blind spot here and this a pillar is thick enough i already have a decent blind spot especially on the driver's side and having the banks up there so i'm going to give these things a try uh, this is an e-trailer i love love their site their customer service is excellent their shipping times are good and their information and their installation videos are good like right down here <clears throat> they've got a review and then over here they've got an actual installation which again I mean, they're, they're snap-on mirrors with a, a pretty minor retaining system but it's cool i like their website the other thing i'll be got, getting from them is an extension harness uh, i put or I, when we're dry camping, I bought a 40 gallon uh, RV water tank and rigged up a little pump and a frame around it so that I can put, again, 40 extra gallons of water in the bed. And I just am going to intercept the factory seven pin harness like I had on my old truck, put this outlet in the bed, and I just plug in the, the water pump. And when I'm ready to go, I coil out a hose and it pumps water into my camper. It's pretty damn nice. This gives me, when you're being conservative on water, this gives you a solid 10 days out there. You're going to fill your tanks, especially the crapper tank on my trailer before you run out of water. So, Jury's still out on the PPE pan. This is a transmission pan. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, I shouldn't say that. I'm going to do this. So there's a trend in the automotive industry. They, they're doing away with dipsticks on transmission pans, making it harder for the average Joe to do a service on their transmission. Because you've got Allen plugs in the side of the damn transmission that you basically, like an old tractor, you fill it until it runs out. Okay, uh, whatever. PPE has this nice pan that not only adds a drain plug, factory pan doesn't have that either, go figure but it has this fill plug and over here that's a tube that should be the same height as that allen plug that's in the side of the transmission block for the oil level so basically you put your catch pan under this take that plug out and you sit there pumping transmission oil into the side of your transmission through the fill plug different plug and when it starts coming out of here you got it made now it's supposed to be warm operating temperature i don't know how you're supposed to do that with new oil i guess don't change it in the winter change it in the summer i, I don't know anyway i am not going to pay the dealership their price to do transmission services plus i want to run ams oil and i don't even if i took it to a, a shop and, and provided them the oil and they were willing to put it in do you ever really have a guarantee no transmission cooler so they have a factory external cooler this one's about twice the size this one juries out i don't know if i'll need to do this i haven't towed yet i've only had the truck for a couple months i have not towed in the summer that'll be the real tale <clears throat> excuse me i'll be watching that bank's uh, eye dash like a hawk watching the transmission oil temperatures and if i don't like where they're going i'll probably install this but i'm being conservative about that because especially with that setup your fuel economy is derived by getting to a certain temperature <coughs> excuse me the engine oil likes to run hotter than your uh you know an engine even 10 years ago you would see uh 240 is a real happy spot on the freeway for that engine oil and that's that's regulated the truck is doing that on purpose through their active thermal management same thing with the engine coolant <clears throat> when it's not under load that likes to run right at about 220 that's where it's programmed to run and it 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 works hard to get there so again jury's out we'll see but it's nice to know that it's available and what the hell's the price on this three you know 351 that's not bad for a drop in it'll bolt right in the the factory location factory lines all that kind of stuff so it's nice to know it's out there so here's the crap i've already put on and this was one of the first mods i made was adding this hitch so north front i guess is the brand torque lift is the company here out of uh was it longview washington nice kit uh 
their bags suck for their hardware. Mine was blown apart, and there was actually a few pieces of hardware that were missing that had come out of the box, but... I mean, that could have just as much been FedEx playing, you know, chalk the wheels with the damn thing. But anyway, it's specifically designed for the diesel. You can see barely right there, it's cut out in the, the lower fascia, just like mine. And you can see how low to the ground it is. I mean, that really... It, having that cooler back there kind of sucks when it comes to adding this, uh, this feature, but whatever. See the price there. I think the shipping, was, yeah, free shipping in the lower 48. So, uh, you know, for me, it wouldn't have been terrible since they're just up north. For anybody in New York or Maine, free shipping on that would be pretty nice. Here's the, the Rough Country kit. Uh, I did not get the super high end shocks, just, you know, Rough Country standard. They're in three struts and rear. I say the blocks in the rear. New upper control arms, loaded strut, lifted loaded struts. Pretty cool. Just got this the other day. This will complete the uh, the advanced trailering package. This camera will mount on the back of my travel trailer. There's four or five different part numbers. They keep changing each year, but I uh, was able to track this one down. And it's a, about a shitty picture, but basically you've got 20... No, 40, roughly, I think 40 feet of cable so that you run this under your trailer and then the camera right there mounts at, basically they tell you to mount it at the same height as the camera that's in your tailgate. Uh, so that's how that system will work. So yes, I'll have a piece of cable visible kind of running up the back of my trailer do I care? No, no, I don't. Not for the feature that it'll add, the functionality that it'll add. And again, it's uh, it's got the receptacle right there on the bumper. There's actually two. You could buy two of these kits, and one would go on the outside of the trailer. And if you had, say, a horse trailer, or a livestock trailer, or uh, you know, an enclosed cargo trailer, you were transporting a '69 Camaro. You could run a second camera and have it on the inside of the trailer, so you can keep an eye on whatever it is you're hauling. Pretty cool. I'm looking forward to getting this in and installing it. Uh, WeatherTech, they may not be the best option, but for the price, uh, it, it worked pretty well. I, I've seen a few others out there, I'm failing to remember the brand names, that maybe had a little taller side, or I think there's one that has a locking lid. I, you know, whatever, whatever, excuse me, floats your boat. I think the biggest objection I have to the WeatherTech one God, and they're not showing it. These are some generics, generic pictures. But your jack, they do a cutout so that your jack and lug wrench crap is outside of the container. And I'm like, why the hell? You know, you've got this little strap that you use to, to hold it to the, the seat frame right there. And the jack has to screw down, so why they didn't just incorporate that in there, I don't know. But again, for the price, it's great. I can put all my crap in there that I need. Tire chains, you know, jumper cables, and sockets, wrenches, whatever I think I need to keep my butt out of trouble. Um, I've always used these. I like the vent visors, uh, whether it's a, a drizzly day and you want a little fresh air, or whether it's a hot ass smoky summer day and we got wildfires and you want to be able to ventilate your window but not have ash pouring in when you're parked at work. I mean, I know that sounds strange, but here in Southern Oregon, that's actually a thing. So I've always preferred the in-channel ones. Uh, I'm not 100% happy with these yet. I want to get through a warm summer and hopefully they'll take shape a little better. The driver's window is real sensitive. I've got to kind of feather it up because it thinks it's hitting something right now. If I have to, I'll pull this out and reset it. But like I say, we'll see. Uh, if a, a warm summer, you know, might not just soften everything up and smush it into place. I'm hoping. Again, the bug shield, again, it's not for bugs. It has nothing to do with bugs. It has to do with protecting that hood edge from rocks and whatever else. So... Uh, yeah, there we go. I mean, 53 bucks. Hey, 
hey, it's hard to go wrong. So that's all the important stuff that I've put on there. Uh, we were discussing payloads and all that kind of jazz. So here's the cut sheet, the basic one on uh, Forest Rivers website for that travel trailer that I have. The hitch weight is actually unloaded. Hitch weight is actually a little less than uh, than what I remembered. But again, I know I have enough junk in front of the axles stored in there. Unloaded vehicle weight 5492. Cargo carrying capacity 2074. So pretty good. You know, this puts the max vehicle weight at 7266, if I remember correctly. Or not doing that math in my head at the moment. But it, it's about, what is that, 1,800 pounds less, fully loaded, 1,800 pounds less than the, the truck's uh, towing capacity. So that I feel okay about. Um, you add up the capacities of all of these tanks, and in the end, you got about 700 pounds of cargo carrying, because if you're dry camping and you're, you're leaving and you're full, which I've done, I absolutely have done, you know, you, you you get up there and wait. Now, gray water, that's not toxic. You can, you know, find ways when you're dry camping to dispose of that safely enough. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So I put together a little spreadsheet. This is pretty basic. It was quick and dirty. But so the payload capacity of the truck is 1685. And this column remaining payload, you know, I started putting together... kind of a list of what uh, what I was kind of looking at and I should have done this before we went live there we go do red for negative except I didn't want that dollars dummy funny part is I actually no excel pretty well. There we go. So that front hitch, let's say 80 pounds. Subtract that from that. Let's go down the list. My crap in the truck, say 60 pounds worth of crap. The headache rack, roughly another 50 pounds. Roughly. The road active suspension that I added on, on the rear springs there, about 15 pounds a piece, roughly. Got my family in the truck. So there we are, just the truck, just the son of a bitch rolling down the road. I've taken 1685, and when I load the family in there, I'm down to less than a thousand pounds of payload capability. That's a little sobering when you look at it like that. Tongue weight of that trailer, 349. Assuming, and this may be and, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to underestimate. I'm going to go to 200 pounds. Between the extra battery, because I put a second battery up there, and no trailer should come with one battery. It's freaking stupid. And the stuff I have under the bed, say 200 pounds, down to 150 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. So let's say I'm dry camping. I throw that 40-gallon spare water tank in there. That's just the weight of the water. I mean, I'm discounting the... 20 pounds of frame and pump, but 332, I'm 183 pounds overweight. Say I've got my generator, some firewood, a couple, you know, inflatable boats, fishing gear, another 250 pounds of crap. Say I put my canoe on top, because I've got it set up to do that too. So that was kind of the the point I was making that these damn half tons, uh, you're, you're giving up some cargo carrying capacity. Now, is that number going to stop me from doing any of this? No, not a chance in hell. I know the truck will handle it just fine, but I'm assuming a bit of liability by, by making that statement and then actually doing it. Because if God forbid there ever was an accident and you know, it was quote unquote my fault and they looked at the truck being overloaded say brakes failed you know there's just all these stupid scenarios that you kind of got to weigh out but i'm not 
not worried about it. I know the truck is more than capable of, of handling it, but it's just something to be aware of. That's why a lot of folks do stick with a three quarter ton, but again, 99% of the time I don't need it. So we're going to try this out, see how it goes. Anyway, it's gotten long winded enough. I'm going to call this good. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, this was a little, little bit of a change of pace. I know, uh, I'm not going to turn the channel into a you know, an homage to that truck by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's something I like, something I've been do, you know, doing the last uh, couple months, getting it all ready to rock and roll, so why not? Let's throw it out there. So, Merry Christmas, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.